opinions on this show do not necessarily represent the Panhandle News Network, WEPM and WCST, or West Virginia Radio Corporation. Good morning, friends. It's time to brush the sleepy dust from your eyes. Rise and shine, up and at them. It's showtime. Live from the Hoppy Kerchival Building on King Street in Martinsburg. This is Liberty Trending with Jeff Adams, your deep dive and daily analysis into the news that affects you. Welcome to the show, Berkeley County Delegate and Independent Candidate for Governor of West Virginia, uh, Marshall Wilson joins me. Good morning, Delegate Wilson. Good morning, Jeff. How are you, sir? I, I am fantastic, sir. Yesterday was, was Constitution Day. Yes, sir. And I don't think I would uh, offend you at all by calling you a constitutionalist. <laughs> and I also don't think I would be incorrect in calling you a constitutionalist. A lot of people have asked me, this show is relatively new, a lot of people ask me why I call it Liberty Trending, and I said, uh, I always say it's because I see Liberty slipping, and we, <laughs> and we need to get Liberty Trending. So, And that was your intention yesterday with Constitution Day, obviously. However, there was a reporter from the uh, West Virginia Gazette Mail, and this is how this got onto my radar. I see... Uh, this reporter tweet yesterday his story. Capitol Police quickly defuse first anti-mask protest at West Virginia Capitol. And I thought, well, what is this all about? And then I saw your response where you said, and this is where I'll let you pick up the story. You said, um, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, absolutely none of that happened. So please tell me what happened yesterday. Well, the, uh, the exact quote is exactly none of this happened. Okay, exactly none of this so, happened. Uh, there was no mask. Protest. He didn't diffuse anything, and uh, he um, he's just flat out fabricating stuff. But you know that's uh, par for the course for uh, Mr. Cabler, Phil Cabler. Uh, you can check with most of the members of the legislature. He uh, just randomly gives himself to flights of fancy and then publishes them. But, so, uh, so your intention your intention yesterday was just to uh, 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 do more education for folks about the Constitution, yeah. which is which is incredibly important. Yes, sir. What actually happened yesterday was, and, I, and I've been working on this for months. I've coordinated this, uh, invited some uh, uh, some true um, scholars on the Constitution, on history. Uh, we had uh, we had Dr. Michael Haynes, who is the chair of the government department at Patrick Henry College in um, in uh, Purcellville, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was the primary speaker. What he did was he provided all the historical, philosophical, and moral context throughout the presentation as we had various speakers get up and address specific points. So he, uh, you know, all I did was MC. I just kind of kept things moving up. But right. uh, we had these brilliant people come in and talk about our Constitution and, and how it came about and, and how it was formed and why it's important and why we must protect it and why we must uphold it. So we had Dr. Haynes, who is, you know, a, a, a very respected uh, academic, right? And uh, then we had um, we had Dr. Stephen Smoot, who is uh, a native of, of Ripley, West Virginia, and a, a brilliant man who gave a, uh, a brilliant exposition of how the state of West Virginia came about, and how our Constitution came about, and what it means, and what it's founded upon, and why it's so important that we uphold these principles. Not just the document itself, but the principles upon which it's founded. The man did a, an amazing job, right? And then uh, we also had Delegate Pat McGeehan from uh, the uh, First District, way up in the in the tip of the northern panhandle, and uh, a uh, gentleman I attended grad school with. I, I have a master's in national security. Uh, he and I attended grad school together. His name is Mr. Robert Nee, and I'm not at liberty to tell you what he does for a living, but I will tell you that he's a brilliant scholar. And uh, he, uh, he presented the Federalist argument, and Delegate McGeehan presented the Anti-Federalist argument, and they did an amazing job. Most people aren't even aware that this discussion ever took place. They just think a bunch of guys sat down over a weekend and wrote a constitution. They don't understand. They were serious, right. serious arguments among brilliant people about how to do this. And uh, Delegate McGeehan was, was good enough to, to actually tie uh, anti-federalist arguments to some of the issues we're seeing there and saying, look, they, they actually pointed out some critical issues. Um, we also had a gentleman named Luis Patino. Luis Ernesto Patino. And he's from he's from Venezuela, correct? Yes, sir. And he I just want to, yeah, I want to interject real quick. The, 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 the great speech, and I think that's on your, I saw it I, on your Facebook page, right? Yes, sir. So yes. you can go to uh, Delegate Marshall Wilson's Facebook page and see this. So, so tell us about yes, this sir. gentleman. It's also on my Twitter. Okay. Uh, but 
But, uh, yeah, Mr. Patino, he's a friend of mine. He is literally in exile from the nation of Venezuela because he is under threat of death. He is a founding member of Voluntad Popular, which is the, uh, it's the political party of the valid. And I, when I say valid, I mean the U.S. recognizes Juan Guaido right. as the president of Venezuela, even though uh, they have a, uh, a socialist dictator. Right. And uh, so this gentleman was one of the people who helped uh, establish the party that actually was trying to, to establish liberty in this, this socialist dictatorship. And he's under the U.S. in exile. And he was good enough to come and speak and tell us what happens when you fail to protect your constitution. Venezuela was the fourth richest, the fourth wealthiest nation on the planet. Right. They were ahead of China. Right. And then the socialists took over and you've got people eating their pets. Right. Okay. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Did you see that story um, uh, uh, the other day, you, you probably didn't because the media pretty much blacked it out. It was a little bit of accidental journalism from N <laughs> NBC, NBC6 in Miami. Uh, the vice presidential candidate on the Democrat side, Kamala Harris, showed up at a Venezuelan restaurant and they basically threw her out. As, I missed that. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I, I think I tweeted it, so uh, you're, you're following me on Twitter. So, so scroll down a little bit. You'll see that, that NBC I'll News report. And I tell people all the time, if you want to... Uh, understand the dangers, and that's uh, an understatement, using that word, of socialism or communism. All you got to do is talk to a Cuban-American, a Venezuelan-American, uh, uh, somebody who, who, who grew up uh, behind the Iron Curtain. All you got to do is talk to one of those people. And you, you probably know I spent years living in the jungle, in, in the Amazon jungle in Peru. Right. And I had a lot of friends who, you know, their family members had been murdered by the, uh, they call them the Sendero Luminosos, the Shining Path Maoist Communist Terrorists, who ruled Peru for a while. And, uh, you know, in the 20th century alone, Marxism, the, the adherence to Marxism, murdered over 100 million people that we know of. Right. You know, so, yeah, Marxism is bad all the way around. Uh, we also had a, uh, let me see, where was I? So... Yeah, so we ha also had a, a uh, retired Army First Sergeant named Barry Holston from the uh, Trollson area, who uh, basically he wrapped it all up with this basic idea of, well, given everything we've just heard, how then should we live? How does how does a free mountaineer, how does a citizen of West Virginia uh, take this information and move forward? And, uh, you know, First Sergeant Holston did a great job of laying out what our responsibilities are as citizens. Now, this gentleman, of course, is a combat veteran. He's a retired soldier. Um, he is very engaged in local and state politics just as a, as a citizen. He lobbies the legislature as a private citizen. Mm. And then he also has a, a, a local organization, a community organization there in the Charleston area where he's trying to help people who, uh, you know, just, just need a chance to, to get moving. So... Uh, yeah, it was, it was an amazing presentation. It took me months to put it together. I had some of the finest people I've ever known come and speak. And, uh, oh, we also had Pastor Bill Harmon, uh, who is a West Virginia pastor. And uh, he came, and he, he was good enough to bring the invitation and the blessing at the end. And, and you know, it was, it was engaging and enthralling and, and informative. And important. And, and, important, and important is, yes. And the only thing the media... The, there was a total media blackout except Phil Kabler claiming that the whole thing was a mass protest because a couple of the attendees, and by the way, the attendees who were thrown out were mothers with their homeschool children. Wow. Okay? They weren't, they weren't you know, armed protesters showing up, you know, and trying to start an insurrection. Right. They were mothers with their homeschool children. And a couple of them tearfully explained to me, look, I, I have health issues. My children have health issues. You know, that's why we're not in the public schools, because we are, you know, we have these issues. And so we just wanted to come in. And when we, and, and by the way, as we entered through the, uh, and I went through the, the public entrance too, uh, as we entered through the public entrance, of course, we went through the normal procedures where we had to go through the metal detector and all that kind of stuff. But also we had to have our temperature scanned. Right. And then we had to fill out a, uh, an information sheet on our, on our, uh, our health. Well, you know, um, the government does not have the right to deny you access to the government um, because, you know, because and, and demand HIPAA protected information from them. 
But that's not even the point. The point of the day was to study the Constitution and actually kind of to, to celebrate the Constitution. Okay, well, let's recognize let, it's important. Let's let's talk about the Constitution, specifically the Tenth Amendment, because I don't know if you uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw Joe Biden's town hall last night. I love the Tenth Amendment. Yes, go ahead. I, I love the Tenth Amendment as well. And uh, Joe Biden's town hall last night. He and you'll hear this clip later in the show. He again in the in a span of twenty four hours reversed his. Uh, his promise to implement a national mask mandate. Right, right, right. So again, he's back to saying that instead he's going to ask each governor to do a statewide mask mandate. So if uh, he becomes President Biden and you are Governor Wilson and he asks you for a statewide to implement a statewide mask mandate in West Virginia, what is your response? I will uh, graciously thank him for his recommendation and go on about my business. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's pretty cut and dried, right? But why? But being a constitutionalist, you can explain why can't why why does uh, why does uh, Vice President Biden keep changing his position? I think it has to do with the polling, not so much because some some constitutional scholar is telling him it's illegal to do it. Why do you think it is? He keeps well, changing I, I his think, mind on that. I think it's because people keep responding, and he he understands that that's unpopular. And I'm not sure that it's unpopular because people understand the constitutional principles behind not allowing him to do it. I think it's because just most people are sick of this garbage. Yeah. But let's let's discuss, you know, the actual duties of an executive and then, of course, the federal, you know, the federalist principles here uh, between the state and the government. OK, I mean, the federal government. So, first of all, the chief executive is the chief of the executive branch and therefore has directorial authority only over members of the executive branch. Right. The average citizen is not a member of the executive branch of the government. Therefore, the governor has no authority over that person at all, period. Right. As a matter of fact, it's the inverse. He is literally their employee and needs to do what they direct him to do under the Constitution. He's got it all. This whole thing has been turned upside down, and it's been turned upside down on purpose throughout the past century because... There are people who want to centralize power and want to own you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not a conspiracy. That's just human nature. Right. It's just human nature. And if you study history and if you understand anything about human beings, you know, you know that kid who was always asked to take notes, uh, take names when the teacher left the classroom? Right. Well, your government is formed of tens of thousands of those people. Right. Who entered the government so they could continue doing that? They want to be the guy who's who's controlling a little tiny gateway because that's how they define their value as a human being. Okay, right. and the rest of us who have things to do, like start businesses, raise families, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, we we have to deal with these people because they they position themselves so that you have to deal with them. And and all we want to do is just get through the gate and get on with our lives. But that is what your government is, and these people have worked. For, you know, well, since the founding, they've been trying to do this, which is reverse the entire intent of the revolution and of the Constitution, which is all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Gover for the To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, drawing their just powers from the consent of the governed. In other words, you know, government guys... You don't do jack unless we citizens tell you to. Right. And here's a and here's a charter that tells you what you can't do up front, so you don't even have to ask permission to do that. It's called the Constitution. You can't do these things. Don't even try. We're talking okay. with uh, Berkeley County Delegate Marshall Wilson, who is also an independent candidate for governor. Uh, we could talk about federalism and the Tenth Amendment all day. Obviously, that's uh, our forefathers were very, very, very smart to not want centralized power coming out of Washington, D.C. Absolutely. Centralized power anywhere is a bad thing. Right. And you're uh, and, and, and it appears that half the country is either unaware that this is happening or that or they really want centralized power out of Washington, D.C. Well, I mean, you've been you, you know, people have been educated for decades now, longer than decades, over 100 years, uh, starting basically with the progressives, I guess, in what, the 1880s. We've been trained to believe that the government is our daddy and that uh, we need to just respect daddy and do what he says to do and he'll he'll make sure that we eat and that we you know that we know what our purpose in life is and he'll he'll guide us along by the hand whereas the simple fact of the matter is it's not daddy it's more like he's um it's more like he's he's a butcher 
and we're uh, we're his flock, you know? Understood. Yeah. How's the campaign going? You're traveling all over the state. Uh, what are people asking you? What, what are West Virginians saying they need? Uh, well, basically, the, the people that I talk to, they'll come to me with specific policy issues, and I will respond by saying, look, um, where I stand on that specific policy, you know, it, I, I can talk to you about that, but what really matters is reestablishing constitutional governance and then having that discussion within a constitutionally functioning government, because that's how we, the people, rule ourselves. Um, and, and once I, I couch it in those terms, most people go, wow, okay, so the fact that you disagree with me on, you know, whether the sky should be blue or pink is not really the important issue. The important issue is that our government is not functioning. And, I, you know, and I go beyond that and say, as your governor, uh, my, my ideas of what policy should be or what law should be are specifically unimportant because the legislators determine that. And as the chief executive, it's simply my job to execute the laws of the land in your name, in the name of the people, as your representatives create the laws. It's my job to ensure that departments of the executive branch execute those laws right. according to your will. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I do have policy uh, discussions and I, you know, very specific things that I will never back down on. Uh, I believe that uh, that each individual human being has the right to life from the moment of conception to the moment that they naturally die. Um, I believe that we all have a right to defend ourselves, not only from uh, bears or intruders in our home, but also from an overweening uh, and, and cynical government. Um, so I will never back down on the Second Amendment. Um, I, I believe that the, the purpose of the government is to secure our individual natural rights. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, a big part of the pursuit of happiness is the right to own private property. And the government needs to stop confiscating our property at gunpoint because that's what the government is. It's nothing but force. So using the monopoly of force of the government, uh, we confiscate the wealth that other people create by the investment of their, their time, their efforts, their capabilities. In other words, themselves. So this wealth that they create is nothing further than a, and nothing other than a, a representation of themselves. So when the government comes in and by, by sheer force, because that's all the government is, is force, right. shows up and says, give me this wealth that you have created so that I can dispose of it as I will. The government is literally taking you from yourself. It is robbing you of yourself. And, uh, you know, there, there are other words for that. But uh, basically what you're doing is you're, you're allowing the government to own you. And uh, it needs to end. It we've really got. Does need to end. We've got about a minute left. I, I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I've been saying this since the show started. This is the fifth week of the show. Well, the, the most overused word I've heard the last uh, six months is mandate or mandatory. Right. Uh, the, the, we keep talking, or the governments, uh, whether they be federal or state, keep talking about these uh, mandates. And correct me if I'm wrong. There can't be a mandate without a law behind it. Am I correct there? Yes, sir. And the legislature makes the laws, not the executive. Correct. You know, it's funny because I went to the judiciary and requested a writ of mandamus, a mandate to the governor, commanding him to follow the Constitution, and the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals refused to hear it. Wow. Yeah. We're talking with Berkeley County Delegate and independent candidate for Governor Marsha Wilson. I think it's important for me to point out, too, uh, that you're, you're, uh, for folks, need, uh, if they're going to vote for you, they need to uh, write your name in. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, yes, so if you would link that with me on my face, I mean uh, on my uh, website, it's Marshall M A R S H A L L four F O R W V dot com. Marshall for W V dot com, please. Pleasure to speak with you, Delegate Marshall Wilson. We'll talk again soon. Great, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, sir.